In this video, you will be getting a step-by-step -step walkthrough on how to create your Express ID profile effectively so you get your permanent residency in Canada. To give you a backstory, I came in Canada as a student and I have completed all my applications related to the immigration in Canada all by myself and currently I'm a proud citizen of Canada. So definitely I have gone through what you are planning to go through and I'm here to help you answer all your questions. Okay, so once we log in, we go into uh, determining your eligibility. So we'll click on the express entry. After that, we'll select which province do you want to live in. So here in this case, you don't have to say the province where you already are living in. Let's say if you are already in Canada, but this is more about which province do you want to live in or interested in. So let's say I'll say Nova Scotia. After that, the next thing is the English language test results. Please make sure that you have given the test and you have the results ready with you before continuing. Okay, after that, this is the date of the test. For those who don't know, the ILTS test expires after two years. So you have to make sure that you have enough bandwidth uh, in terms of your dates and filing this application. Because once you file this application, you get a PR invitation and you apply for PR, they do the processing. This whole thing can take almost one year. So you want to make sure at least you have one year worth of ILTS timeframe in case if your ILTS expires while you are in the pool or while your application is in processing after you get an invitation you can always give the ILTS again and update the score here so you get a new expiry which is worth two more years which serves the purpose so we'll continue uh, we'll have to provide the English test score if you have taken any other language test please uh, accept it here for the simplicity of this application I'll just say no here in last three years how many years of skilled work experience do you have in Canada so as you can see it tells me that I'm a peer to be eligible for the express entry based on my answers and right now I have to do through two steps which is uh, when you click on continue it will be guided to the steps to complete the profile so we'll have to complete the profile review the profile and submit the profile after that once you submit your profile you will get a confirmation message in your account and you'll also get some next steps and information in your account in terms of messages so let's continue and check all that out so here we'll just uh, add our personal information make sure that if you're not sure at any point of time you can always click on question mark and it will give you a brief detail of that that particular field which you need to fill up so you don't need to worry about oh what am i doing am i doing something wrong uh, just click on the question mark and read the information what's your marital status uh, here for married uh, there might be some additional questions but i'm selecting single for the simplicity purpose but if you have any questions related to that please do let me know now as you can see that in this page it tells me that i have to complete this six set of information to be accepted as a candidate of express entry in the pool so i'll, I'll start by filling out my personal details and i'll spend more time in the places where most of you are confused please bear with me here uh, as i'll be explaining each and everything step by step and I'll try to cover as much information as possible. So as you can see, you already filled out some information while checking your eligibility. That's already filled up. So that's why it says it's grayed here, it's logged. So you can't change that. We'll just click on next. Uh, in case if at any point of time you feel that, oh, this is grayed out, I did a typo, I did a mistake, you'll have to start again. Uh, we'll just say, like, select the birth of country, let's say. As you can see, the material status is also grayed out. So we'll click on next. So this is related to the ID, okay? If Raj Patel does not have a passport or travel document, we will need the national identity document in this case. But if you are a student or an immigrant already living outside your home country, you should have a passport document and that's that's it. But if for some people who do not have a passport document and just have the national ID document, then in that case, you can select no and provide more information. But I'll just say yes for now. Uh, so here in this case, as you can see, I can select either of those and I have to provide my document number. So I just say, do make sure that you have enough room 
for the expiry in your password document as well while doing all this because if anything changes you'll have to change this application so let's say if you're almost there you have to update your passport or you have to update any other document which you're mentioning here i would suggest that if it's just 10 15 days worth of difference please do that first and then come back here but in any case you can always change this application or while uh, they're processing your application at all so you don't have to worry about it it's just for simplicity gives you less headache so we'll continue uh, as you can see i've added one you can add multiple travel documents if you have we'll click on next has raj patel applied to immigration refugee citizenship can of canada before you have to say yes in this case if you came on work permit if you came as a student or for any other purposes you'll have to provide that has a raj patel applied for express entry before if you did you'll have to provide that if you did not then it's no i'll just say for the simplicity purpose no here for any purposes if you have entered canada your uci number would have been generated for sure and you would have the document setting whether it's your study permit whether it's your work permit whether it's any other document through which you migrated to canada then you would have the uci number given to you if it was an online application you would when you go into your profile you will see the uci number right when you log in on the top right corner and if you do not have that let's say you have a study permit then right when you open your study permit right in the top right corner you will be able to see the uci number right there so please use that number and paste it here if you don't know more about it just click on the question mark and it will tell you more about uh, this detail it will be there in any official document related to you provided by ircc so we'll just provide more information if you have dual citizenship of the countries then do provide both of them now the country of residence here if you are already in canada living in canada then you have to provide canada as country of residence in this case let's say if you are on a tourist visa and you are filling this application that does not count as residency because you are not living here and paying any taxes so you have to provide your home country as residence right you do not have to use canada in that case for more information just click on question mark the person must be in the country legally but that does not count visitors now once the immigration history is done we'll click on the family how many family members you have now this includes yourself your spouse partner or dependent children or any of their dependent do make sure that your parents or grandparents are not dependent on you so they're not counted but if you do not have anyone and let's say you are single then you just say one in that case if you have your spouse you say two and depending on how many children you have you can go up till seven and greater than seven so i'll just say one here for the simplicity purpose because i have selected i'm not married how much money will you bring in canada now for the people who are in their postgraduate work permit and are planning to apply through the canadian experience class uh, for those who know you do not need to provide any proof of funds so in that case you can just provide whatever money you have in your account this is definitely needed this is required to provide because this is a general application pool right this is not specific to cec or fsw or any fs federal skill trade this is general pool so this question is very generalized for federal skill workers if you are not in canada and let's say you're applying to be in the pool you need to make sure uh, that you follow this so just click on the question mark click on this table and you will be taken to the proof of funds page so when you scroll down you will be able to see the latest number as of april 2023 in this case but if you're watching this in future you always come back to this page as i mentioned and you can see for one person right now at this particular point of time you need 13757 so if it, you are a single person you need this so much amount if you are coming with spouse you need $17,127 so this is the minimum proof of funds you need so you will have to mention that here otherwise you will not be able to enter into the pool you can obviously show more numbers here but at least this is the number you'll have to say but the exempted program is CEC so if a candidate wants to apply through CEC they can provide any number so let's say if I say $4,000 and if I submit this application it will just tell me that I I'm eligible for the CEC application as long as I provide that I have a work experience in Canada. Let's say I provide complete 
let's say $15,000, then it's going to tell me that I am eligible for CEC as well as FSW, right? So it totally depends on what criteria you match and you want to make sure that you can match as much as possible. So let's say if you have more money with you, then just at least try to provide whatever is truth, right? Now we'll go to the next section here, which is do you have any relatives in Canada? The relatives mean anyone who is 18 years older and living in Canada and who is a citizen or permanent resident in Canada. Now, if you do, you just have to say yes. And in this case, you can select who they are, whether it's your aunt, uh, daughter, granddaughter, grandmother, mother, niece, nephew, sister, spouse, anyone counts and where do they live. But in this case, for the simplicity, I'll just say no and I'll save and exit. So as you can see, the personal details is fulfilled. We'll go to the next section, contact details. I'm not spending much time here because this is very simple. So I'll just uh, walk through this. Study and languages. This is where you have to provide all the information about your education and your language test course. So in this case, have you finished high school or higher education? If you did, you have to say yes, because if you say no, then technically you are not eligible for any of the programs. So you have to say yes, because high school is the minimum you have to be graduated. And we'll just select the field of study. Uh, do make sure that you are selecting the right field of study. If you are confused, then just select whatever the generic uh, field of study you can find related to your studies. What time did you start? Now remember here, if you have any questions regarding what should I select, just click on the question mark and it will tell you how you should select particular option for a, for example here in full-time or part-time study you must be at least in class for 15 hours per week during the academic year to be considered full-time right so if that's the case you can always say yes for full-time otherwise it's a part-time study similarly for any questions you have just click on the question mark So here in the level of education, uh, I'm selecting bachelor's because uh, that will make me eligible and I can show you the entire steps, but do fill out all the details here as needed. So do make sure that you start from your latest education and then work your way backwards. If you were awarded a Canadian degree, you say yes. In this case, you have to provide more information. If you say no, so you say, you don't need any further information in this case. So in this case, if you have not been awarded a Canadian degree, then you need to do the education credential assessment within the past five years. If you have already done that, that's okay. But if you have not done it, uh, there's an organization called World Education Services called WES. And through that, you can do your ECA. I am linking the video down here. So please go and look at it. I also provided step-by-step -step instruction on how you can apply for your ECA for any education credentials. So I'll just say yes in this case that I've done it. If you have done it, it will ask you to provide the education services. So I'll just say World Education Services in this case. And when, was, when did I do it? So it has to be less than five years. And I have to provide my certificate number and I have to provide the level of education equivalency came in that certificate, right? Because they will ultimately pull that certificate as well to verify. But for now, you have to provide whatever it was verified as. So let's say I did bachelor's and they verified that yes, indeed it was a bachelor's. So I get the level of education converted. For some degrees, let's say they will just say, okay, it was bachelor's in your country, but it was like two or more years program for us. Then you'll have to select like that and you only get points for that program you don't get points for your bachelors so make sure that uh, your ECA is done properly so in this case if you say no if you say you have a Canadian degree right uh, then there are different set of questions which you need to answer uh, was this degree a diploma or certificate so you have to say yes if it was what is the designated learning institution number of the school so DLI is very common if you do not have a DLI which means that your university or the college which you studied from is not eligible now that never happens that you're you do not have a dli number and you can always find it through this site so you can find it on our site just click on it and you will be taken to this page here you find your university or college and then that's it so let's say we'll select british columbia let's say we'll select so ubc you see a dli number here similarly you will definitely have a dli for yourself so we'll just use it paste it here that's it sometimes what happens is uh, when you are given a scholarship or any awards terms of the award is that you have to go back to your country once you finish the studies to apply your knowledge and skills there if you have been provided any of that award you will have to say yes but if you have not taken any such scholarship 
just say no. Now, just to be clear in this section, not all the studies or scholarships do require you to go back to your home country, right? So you can make sure that even if you have received it, you have to say no here, unless the terms specifically say that you have to go back to your home country. Now, you are getting why they are asking this question because you are not eligible to apply for PR under this education program if you have been given such and such scholarship. So we'll go to the next part here. Did you complete 50% of the study through in-person learning? Now, this is for those COVID students. If you were doing digital classes or not, if you studied in-person or not was always the question after COVID. For more information, just click on the question mark. It will tell you even the date and timelines of when do you need it. And that's it. For most students I know, if you're applying for PR, you have completed your studies 50% in person. Next question is, did you study in Canada for at least eight months? So while you were in person, but were you in Canada for at least eight months? If you were not, then that kind of raises some questions. You can see in the question mark here, more details about it. And if you were, mostly you'll just have to say yes. So that's simple. And did you completed at least eight months worth of studies to earn this degree diploma or certificate, which is the minimum? So you will obviously be saying yes in this case. And similarly, you have to add all your educations. So do make sure that you fill up whatever the two or three level of education you want to add here. You have to add all the education for which you are claiming the point. In this case, let's say if you have done an advanced diploma in Canada, and um, technically that's not your highest education, but it helps you to claim the point because it puts you in the section of two or more degrees, diploma or certificates. So I'll click on next here. So you have to say whether it's in English, uh, French or both. In this case, it does not tell you whether you casually speak English, French or both, but it's, it's more about the assessment. So if you have been assessed, only then select both. If you've not been assessed, let's say in French, then do not select that. You'll just have to provide the certificate number. The language test result form or the certificate number for your language test for ILTS, you will find it, if you'll open the certificate, you will find it right somewhere here and just use that number and paste it here. So I hope that helps. The date of the test result would also be given in your test form. So just use the test form, the, the date in it, and just paste it here along with your certificate number. Everything else was preferred, so you don't have to worry about it. So as you can see, we have completed three parts of the form. Now, while we are 50% done, let me tell you some of the some things which you might encounter. So let's say I am updating this form and I forgot to fill out something. Let's say I did not fill this and I clicked on save and exit. It will say in progress. If you are getting this in progress, that means you have not completed the form. You go back to the form and then you see there's a tick mark here. This section is completed. And then I go back in the official language. As you can see, there is in progress. So that means there is something which I have not filled in the official language. So I go back and then select whatever is not done. So English te language test version here, as you can see in the training, I just click on this, I click on save and exit, and now it's complete. So for those people who are wondering about this, here is your solution. Now we go to the next section, application details. Now this is a quick part, but it is very important. So I'll take some time in explaining about this as well. Which provinces would you consider living in? Now, if you know that you might not get a lot of score as a part of this express entry pool, and you might want to change your province from where you are living right now, or if you are not living anywhere, then you are totally open to provinces, then you can just select all provinces and territory. But let's say if you want to stay in a particular province because of your job or where you are already situated, then just select that province and no other provinces will try to send you the provincial nomination program invitation. And we'll just select yes for British Columbia. We'll just say yes for Ontario. Everyone else is federally governed, so nothing to worry about them. Have you received a certificate from any province? Now, this is for the people who have already got the certificate, who never entered the pool through the expression of interest. A lot of provinces, including Ontario, Alberta, and British Columbia, they, there the candidates do first apply to the province through the expression of interest, through their own uh, pools and nomination. They get the invitation, they fill up all the details, they get assessed, and after that, they get a nomination certificate, and then they come here and apply for their express entry pool, right? So in that case, if you already have it, then just say yes, right? If you have it, it will ask you what province you have, let's say British Columbia, and that's, that's it. 
you don't need any more information but for most people you will not have this right now and there is another way as well so you are not only obligated to do that process to get a nomination certificate from a province you can technically be in the pool and if a province finds you because you, you selected that you are interested in all the provinces here for example if a province sees that you match their eligibility criteria for the express entry pool then they will reach out to you they will send you a message in your express entry account uh, which we have created as a new message will come and then you will find something like this where it says that okay this is the notification of interest by blah blah provinces and that's where you go back to that province website fill out your uh, nomination certificate application they assess you and then they give you the certificate that works as well so do not get confused between this right now and uh, what you're getting you do not need to refill your express entry pool uh, just to say yes in this case right this is only for the people who have already got the nomination certificate and then creating their express entry profile so we'll go next now as we have completed almost half of this application i would really appreciate if you could like this video because if more people like this video it gives me a feedback and it also helps reaching out to the people like yourself who are in need of this application so let's continue representative so in this case if you are uh, consulting uh, a representative whether it's your immigration consultant lawyer friend or family member and you want to appoint them to look at your application then in that case you can just say yes now remember i'm just a youtube guy i'm not your representative so you have to say no in this case because i'm helping you out uh, but if it's a designated individual or representative just say yes or if it's both then just say but in this case pretty simple we'll just say no and continue work history this is a big section we'll spend some time here and we'll help you with most frequently asked questions in this case so you don't struggle uh, the occupation here your primary occupation would have a five digit noc or people say knock code and you have to find it so to find your noc code you can either search here for example software engineers you can easily find it so we click on find your noc and here you can search for your particular knock code so let's say supervisor in supervisor you have like multiple set of supervisors whether you are in the supply chain library correspondence finances general office administrative support workers you can select any of your knock code depending on where you match so if you have any job offer letter or if you are already doing a job that occupation should match one of the knock codes in order to be eligible you will have to make sure that the duties of this knock code matches with your duties and the title of this knock code also matches with your title if that happens that's an easy easy fix sometimes what happens is you do not get the title but you get the responsibility that works as well because different companies use a different title and that's totally fine so here you will have to provide the date during which you were qualified to practice in this occupation now for some people where you need to study and then you need to take a license examination and, and only when you have the license you can practice then in that case you'll have to provide the date when you got the license but in other case if you just completed your study and you are eligible to start the work for example software engineers then you can just say uh, the date of your graduation this does not necessarily mean that you have to provide the latest date of graduation this is something where you have to provide the date where you first graduated from the studies and became eligible to do this occupation whether it was your first diploma or first degree which helped you to start this primary occupation right so do not worry about getting the latest date but get the oldest date instead i'll go to the next section do you have a certificate of qualification from canadian province for people who do not know the certificate of qualification is needed for some skilled trades in canada if you want to use that trade as your primary occupation for example electrician you need some sort of certificate in order to continue working on this and if you do that then you are also eligible for federal skilled trades program as you are a licensed practitioner for that trade but i'll select no in this case and we'll just continue let's say if you say yes then you have to provide all the details about your uh, certificate in this case whether on what territory or provinces it was issued because different provinces have their own certification uh, given uh, the occupation associated with the certificate so here you will be given an occupation let's say i was a I was a metal working or forging machine operator so uh, licensed and uh, I could do that and the date when you obtained the certificate right so that's pretty simple but to keep the application simple I'll just say no we'll go to the next section intended work in Canada so 
do you have a job offer in Canada? Now let's understand what the job offer means because it's not your job offer given by your employer to you. So let's say in this case, you have a postgraduate work permit or an open work permit of any sort of case and you are expecting that, okay, I do have a job offer, does that count? In this case, unfortunately, no. You are only supposed to select this if you are getting a job through the LMI, which is Labor Market Impact Assessment. We'll go through this a little bit just to help people who are going through the LMIA process. Uh, but for most people, you'll just say no here. For the people who want to say yes, that you have an LMIA, you'll provide the information about uh, the job. As long as it's one year, you say yes. Then is the job offer non-seasonal? You have to say yes, because if it's seasonal, then it still does not count. It has to be at least one year and full-time continuous for it to be counted. You'll have to provide uh, the NOC code of the job title of the job as it is in the offer letter and how many employers made this offer you can say how many of offer letters do you have if the employer is a high commission or embassy of canada you just say yes otherwise say no an employer on the list of eligible employers you will have to make sure that your employer is not in the list of ineligible employers which you can find here so here Canadian government has a website which basically says the employers who are found non-compliant just make sure to search your employer and if they are found eligible or not eligible you will be able to know I'm providing the link down in this description for you to go and check for your employer in case if you are going through the LMIA process okay so we'll just say no in this case let's say employee of the uh, employer's name most likely in this part, you will have the LMIA issued for this job offer letter. If not, then you will have the LMIA exemption letter for this job. In either case, you will have to select either yes or no. If you say yes, you have the uh, LMIA number, then you'll have to provide all the details about your LMIA number. If you say you do not have the LMIA number, then you say no. Are you currently working in Canada? If you are, just say yes. Then you'll have to provide all the other details about uh, that job. If you say no, then it's just a job offer letter given to you within LMIA and you are planning to come to Canada as a permanent resident and then do the job. If you say yes in this case, then you have to provide more information such as do you have a valid work permit for the current job because you are not PR right now but you have an LMIA, you should have a valid work permit given to you as a part of this job. If you have it, yes. If your job does not require the work permit and then just say no. So we'll just say yes in this case. It will be asking me whether my current uh, employer's name is, is provided in my current work permit. Uh, generally that's the case because you have been invited to work for that particular company and you are working for that particular company so you'll just have to say yes. If no then uh, you can just provide no. But all these answers which you are giving right now will determine whether you are eligible to be in the pool for express entry or not. So make sure that if you are going through this complex route of LMIA you are consulting someone. So we'll continue with the other questions. Let's say if you are working full time for this current employer for at least one year if you are just say yes otherwise just say no uh, you'll have to provide the noc code for the current work permit which is given to you if the lmia was issued for the current work permit if it was then you just say yes if no if you're exempted then you can just say no and an lmia wasn't issued due to either international agreement federal provincial agreement or the other reasons if you have any uh, otherwise most likely the case will be that yes you have it and you just say yes and we'll just continue in the next section. But before I do that, I'll just say no here, just to make sure that we have all the information needed to count the score. Now the work history section. In this section, you have to provide all your current and previous job for the eligibility of express entry. And this will be used to calculate the scores for me in this case. So make sure that uh, you have all the information been filed up. Uh, if you have any work history, just say yes. Since, since what year? So you just have to provide an year. Uh, if it's your current job, you just say yes. There, the two will go away. Otherwise you provide till when you did your job and how many hours per week it was. If it's not 30 hours per week, then it's not counted as full-time job. Generally it's 37.5 hours per week uh, and five digit NOC code. You'll have to provide the NOC code given for this particular job. And what was the job? Then the employer name and other details I'm filling in. Now, while you're working legally in Canada during this time, say yes. In this case, if you have a PGWP, just say yes, because you have a valid work permit in this case to do this particular job. If you are studying full time while doing this job, you say yes, otherwise you say no, but do make sure that uh, if you select any of 
these where you are not doing full time job then it, you are becoming not eligible for the cec which is canadian experience class uh, what was your work permit like which was your uh, no work permit required work permit required no lmia required or work permit and lmia required so i'll just select work permit and no lmia required for the people in canada for any other experiences as well for back in your home country do that do that it will be far easier because you don't have any of this for the details you have to provide for canada so we'll just click on save and add do make sure that in the work history section you have provided all the job details including your current job to make sure that you are getting all the points for those jobs you do not necessarily have to provide the part time jobs or any jobs for which you will not be able to get any documentation because if you do not get any documents for any job you are not eligible to provide that or use that to get some points you can avoid any jobs for which you do not have a proof next is a research question this is completely voluntary so if you want to provide some answers just say yes and provide the answer so otherwise just say no so as you can see all the sections are now completed do make sure that you go back to each of this section review the details step by step again and make sure that everything is complete correct and accurate as per your knowledge and as per the documents you have once you will finish the application you will be assigned a score depending on the information you have provided but you are not required to provide the documents at this stage you are required to provide documents once you get the invitation and you file for your permanent residency do make sure that whatever you have provided exist because you are getting points out of it and if you are getting points out of it they will ask for the documentation when you are getting invitation and AOR so at that point if you will not have the documents for the information you have provided here or probably you can update it before you get invited it is totally possible for you to update this form but let's say in such case you you have provided some information but you are not able to collect the document for that then that creates issue that may make you ineligible for your permanent residency even though you are meeting the points and all the information is correct but you don't have the documentation so let's continue now finally it's a declaration page where you are declaring uh, you are providing all the information just say i agree provide uh, uh, the name the given name and the in the last name as per your passport and we'll just sign the declaration now when the declaration is signed we'll go into the last where it says that now you transmit basically you are submitting your application into IRCC so I'll click on submit and as you can see congratulations you have successfully submitted your application in the profile and I will exit the questionnaire now as soon as I have it uh, my application or profile will be updated I can check my application status here and as soon as my application is completed I'll get a message whether I'm meeting the eligibility criteria or not so it says you meet the minimum entry criteria I have my profile number created I have my UCI number uh, which should be same as what you have in all your IRC CC official documents profile was submitted on this one the profile expires exactly after one year in that case you'll just have to create this profile again so for those people whose profile is expired do not worry about this just follow the steps and recreate your profile i meet the eligibility documents i meet the canadian experience class as you can see but i do not meet any of the other programs at least as of now and my crs score is 280 depending on what worst things i have provided and the criteria as it basically says here if you want to calculate this CRS CRS score even before applying for this express entry then do check out the video I have provided on the top of the screen and also in the description to help you calculate your CRS score even before filling out this application so you make sure that you are reaching that minimum eligibility criteria and the, where the points are landing these days before you even get into the pool uh, my express entry profile is created I am already in the pool and if the score reaches to 280 <laughs> maybe someday I'll be invited uh, hypothetically i'm already a citizen in canada thank you very much for watching the video please do let me know if you have any comments questions or suggestions for me and if you have seen any of my other videos you know that i try to answer all my comments in case if you are getting the notification of interest from government of ontario and you want to submit the pnp application under human capital's priority stream then do check out this video here there you will find the entire step-by-step -step process on how you can apply for the pnp with ontario so i hope this was helpful and i will see you in the next one.